Welcome to MedEasy. The aortic arches are embryological vascular structures that give rise to arteries of the head and neck. If you remember from embryology, there are six pharyngeal arches which also give rise to structures of the head and neck. This is no coincidence as each one of these pharyngeal arches is supplied by its own aortic arch. Those aortic arches will mostly be obliterated and will transform into the definitive vascular pattern that is present in adults. It's not critical for your step 1 exam to visualize the embryologic development of the aortic arches themselves, but rather what each arch will give rise to. So let's talk about these. The first arch disappears early, but a remnant of this arch gives part of the maxillary artery. The second arch also disappears early, and a remnant of it forms the stabedial and hyoid arteries. The third arch contributes to the formation of the common carotid arteries and the proximal internal carotid arteries, and these both are bilateral. As for the fourth pharyngeal arch, the right arch contributes to the right proximal subclavian artery, while the left arch gives rise to the medial portion of the aortic arch. The fifth arch either never forms or forms incompletely and then regresses, hence it's excluded from this table. The sixth arch will contribute to the formation of the pulmonary arteries bilaterally, and part of the sixth arch will form the ductus arteriosus, which later closes and is termed the ligamentum arteriosum. For heart embryology, we will discuss each embryonic structure and what they will give rise to in the adult heart. This is a picture of the primitive heart tube before looping and morphogenesis have begun. From the top, we begin with truncus arteriosus, which gives rise to the ascending aorta and pulmonary trunk. Then we have the bulbous cordis, which gives rise to the smooth parts or outflow tracts, meaning the areas close to the aortic and pulmonic valves that lead into the aorta and pulmonary trunk. This is easy to remember because the bulbous cordis is closest to the truncus arteriosus in the primitive heart, just like the aorta and pulmonary trunk are closest to the outflow tracts in the adult heart. Next we have the primitive ventricle and primitive atria. We notice that they are reversed in order because looping will place the upper ventricle in the lower side while placing the lower atria in the upper side. The primitive atria and ventricle give rise to the trapeculated, meaning contractile parts of both the left and right ventricle and left and right atria, respectively. Then we have the sinus venosus, which has two horns. The left horn will give rise to the coronary sinus. This is easy to remember since the coronary sinus is situated in the left posterior aspect of the heart, and the right horn of sinus venosus will give rise to the smooth part of right atrium. Then we have the cardinal veins. The right common and right anterior cardinal veins will give rise to the superior vena cava, while the posterior cardinal, subcardinal, and supracardinal veins will form the inferior vena cava. Endocardial cushion also gives rise to all the valves, the semilunar ones, and the atrioventricular ones. And lastly, we talked about how the smooth part of right atrium arises from the right horn of sinus venosus. As for the smooth part of left atrium, it will arise from the primitive pulmonary vein. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching, MedEasy, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more.